The following video contains full spoilers for the game Stray. It's recommended that you play through the game before watching this video. If you're all good, enjoy. This is video footage of one of my parents' pet cats, Zora. She lies around, gets pets, constantly meows. While I don't technically own the cat, Zora is an animal I do, in fact, care about. She matters a lot to my entire family, but I don't know exactly what she's thinking. No one does. She's a cat, after all. It's weird how advanced humanity has become since the original domestication of other species, yet we're still asking questions of what other animals are thinking. Sure, we can piece together the general meaning of certain actions, but we're not really in a place where we can decipher absolutely everything that other species are contemplating. We're ultimately making assumptions. These bestest boys and goodest girls are still beyond our cognitive reach in many ways. We are humans, and yes, we understand what we can. But understanding our pets? It's not a complete puzzle. And, before you ask, her name is like the Blade Runner characters. It's almost eerily fitting that I'd open a video talking about Stray, a cyberpunk adventure game where the player controls a cat, by introducing you to Zora, a cat named after a character from one of my father's favorite cyberpunk movies. While I can't see Zora wandering around rooftops of neon sign-lit cities, as I was writing this script, it became clearer than ever of how little I understand of Zora's behavior. For a video where I'm deducing the thematic elements of Stray, this revelation was fitting. The world of Stray from humble beginnings delivers a fascinating look into humanity's place on Earth. Beyond its adorable lead, Stray stares sharp-eyed through the lens of science fiction, showing why, in mankind's egotism, the world is changing, but not necessarily for the better. So please join me as we dive into the strange, unsettling universe of Stray. Within the first few minutes of the game, Stray's lead becomes separated from its fellow felines, falling into a dark and oppressive underground city, one so ripely irrigated for a cyberpunk story to tell. From toxic slums populated with citizens who are barely able to live their lives, to consumerist sectors peppered with security cameras, Stray is a pretty overt commentary on the same themes and ideas that have made this subgenre of media so instantly recognizable. Some might say it's a bit heavy-handed in that presentation, but behind all the glitz and grime of an almost stereotypical cyberpunk aesthetic, Stray hides a pretty notable bit of commentary. It's not really the richly detailed world on its own that's the most fascinating part of the game. It's the fact that, through all this complicated strife that humankind and its creations have implemented, you're just a cat. And it's endearing to play as a cat. Knocking fixtures off shelves, walking across keyboards, hiding in boxes, it's all so adorable and remarkably well researched on the developer's part. The animations in particular are fantastic, really showing the devs' dedication to making their lead such a believable being in the game's universe. Even the little cat vest that your drone companion rests in is pretty damn cute. Stray is a cute game, but this endearment is a striking juxtaposition from the serious topics that the world of Stray shines a bright spotlight upon. As you're nimbly wandering around the rooftops of a bustling robotic berg, you're seeing rampant consumerism and authoritarian surveillance engulfing the citizens' lifestyles. The slums have the NPCs bundled in blankets knit together by an aging grandma character, with some being unable to work because they're freezing and shivering so much. As much as Stray wants to melt your heart with its lead, it makes just as much an effort to show how humans, and our creations, are flawed, messy, and even dangerous. When you think about it, it makes a lot of sense that a game that uncovers these flaws that humans craft via scientific and technological progress would put the player in the role of a non-human character. Anthropocentrism, the idea that mankind is the true ultimate life form and should be prioritized, has been a discussion in science fiction for a long time. The way this conversation has evolved to include things like artificial intelligence has also built a constantly growing cyberpunk-focused library of novels, films, and games over the decades. Prejudice and power struggles aren't new to games' narratives by any account, and to many, they fit into the guts of cyberpunk far more than any neon-lit shop on the Strip ever could. In its own way, Stray keeps a sharp eye on this anthropocentric viewpoint. With mankind on the brink of catastrophe, the living population developed an enclosed city to shelter them. 
developing plants that don't need sunlight, an intricate sewer system to keep water flowing, and robotic companions that can help preserve humanity's way of life away from the coming apocalypse. The companion robots are the NPCs that populate Stray's major worlds. As the robots became self-aware over time, they mirrored humankind's image very closely. Their bipedal skeletons, their readable facial screen animations, even their hip desire to wear various outfits, they become the translations of humanity, even when the soft ones that have created them in that image have already fallen. The developers of Stray recreated our identities onto the AI companions, which is nothing new for its literary genre. The ethics of robotics alone have established themselves as cornerstones in science fiction, these human-created rules and questions that attempt to make sense of the rapid technological evolution we push ourselves toward. But the ego of people still persists, whether it's through the vanity of robots created in man's image or the overarching belief that humanity can survive against nature's will. But what's especially noteworthy about all of this is that we as players are exploring these ideas in the form of a truly natural being, a cat. From the viewpoint of Stray's diminutive feline lead, these man-made struggles are actually pretty arbitrary. Authoritarian social structures, capitalist consumerism, these are man's creations. It's almost comically ironic that the barred walls humans have created to shackle and divide can be bypassed by a small cat simply slipping between the bars. I think that's a pretty suitable metaphor for one of Stray's observations, that humans are considered by some to be the apex of life on Earth. Yet as forward-thinking as we claim to be, the natural and more instinctive world is sort of at odds with that. We can act in self-interest and aim to progress technology forward, but we're losing a touch of spirit there. That could be interpreted as the major goal of anti-anthropocentrism, to show everyone that humankind's unhindered thirst to progress and flourish is taxing and even harming other life forms on Earth. Stray sits with countless media that have taken a hammer toward dismantling humankind's egotism. This desire to command and reshape the planet for selfish or narrow-minded reasons. In the role of a cat, a form that is closely tied to the natural world where man's stranglehold is weakened, Stray is a grand statement towards showing the harm of human-focused belief structures. Because the goal of Stray's lead is... Well, what exactly is the goal of Stray's lead? To reunite with its fellow cats, as far as we know. Yes, we're told to open up the city, but... Would a cat truly know the magnitude of that goal? Within an artifact that truly shows our own egotistic expansion of influence, does the cat actually understand that? Or are we, as humans, projecting our own mentalities on this character? That's an interesting question, and perhaps it's a criticism of any kind of media that asserts to tackle this topic. We are not cats. We can't truly understand exactly what they're thinking, what their cognitive motives are. We are simply expressing our own goals through this character. Under this mindset, it sounds like a fool's errand to even try this. Despite sharing these stories from a non-human point of view, criticizing and aggressively reforming these flaws, we can't escape our own human identities. As much as we'd like to see how our existence is affecting those who don't possess those qualities, we can't do that without our human perspective leeching onto it. You could say the same of any genre that focuses on identity as a thematic pillar that only through experiencing something firsthand can you really get the complete perspective. Is that a good mindset to have? Well, it's certainly complicated. When it comes down to it, Stray attempts to be an outsider's perspective, a looking in view on how humanity's technological prowess can lead to divisions and power structures that treat others so horribly, and I believe, to an extent, it does succeed. The moment when the city opens up with the bright blue sky above is borderline transcendental, showing the player that humankind's hubris and egoism is a lit fuse on the powder keg toward isolation and eventual collapse, as the creatures of the natural world shown at the start of the game are still instinctively banding together the best they can. While our kind are dividing each other and creating tiers of power to put down the disadvantaged and underprivileged, the cats and other animals are searching for peace together, nurtured by their own familial instinct. Even as the food chain puts animals above or below others, it doesn't seem like this is done in a fully cognitive way the way we humans do it. We're totally aware of it all. It's not something that just happens for us via natural instinct, as far as we know anyway. The irony in everything I've said so far is that I'm human too. For all that I've laid out in front of you, I can't speak from any other perspective than that. Maybe that's the inherent flaw of exploring these concepts in a game like Stray, but I don't believe that should be the end of the conversation. Maybe the desire for understanding should propel us to be as self-aware as this, 
to explore, even in just a peripheral manner, how we as humans are running the world and the consequences that come from our roles as the quote, ultimate life form of Earth. As we create these stories and tales about what mankind's true place in the universe is, we're at least bringing these ideas to light, even if our interpretations will almost inevitably remain incomplete. Really, it sounds like I'm being nihilistic here, but I think it says a lot that, between the meowing and knocking shit over, Stray shows a rich contrast between the filthy, human-driven world we create and the shimmering natural one we often take for granted. Where we are right now, there's a growing distance between humans and other life forms. No matter how many times we say our pets are our fur children, our current place on this speck in space is one of asserting command, even if our intentions seem altruistic. But the clock is ticking. The planet we call home is more than just our own. So do me a favor and take care of the animals in your life as much as you can. Give them a hug or buy them a treat. Because at the end of it all, we humans are not the entire world. We are all, essentially, animals. Thank you.